You can support your local non-league club or buy a mystery box by checking out the nonleaguefootballshop.co.uk and upon checkout, make sure you use the promo code RDFTACTICS10 for a 10% discount. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel. My name is RDF and in today's video we are going to be focusing on Ronald Koeman and Barcelona's new formation. Is it really that good? We will find out. Due to a tactical change, Ronald Koeman's men look revitalised under the new 3-5-2 and 3-4-3 system, which looks to have mitigated some players' weaknesses and improves key players' performances. The tactical switch has had many positive effects off the ball. They are now a better pressing side and on the ball, the side look to have found their rhythm and have played some excellent fluid football. Along with the tactical switch, Barcelona have been producing some excellent results, most noticeably in their La Liga and Copa del Rey second leg matches against Seville, their 4-1 victory at home against Huesca and their biggest win yet, 6-1 away to Real Sociedad, where we saw Barcelona completely dominate the game and put a fantastic controlling display. Barcelona has 69 ball possession to boast with that victory. Though it's still early doors with the system, we've seen the advantages of playing with three at the back has given Barcelona, especially with their press, as they can now man mark their opponents out of the game, limiting the time their opponents have on the ball. In their 6 1 mulling over Real Sociedad, the team shaped up with Ter Stegen in goal, serving as a sweeper keeper. Menguiza and Lengle were the two wide central defenders who were aggressive in winning possession for the side and progressed up the pitch with the ball in the half spaces. Mingueza has been the side's top tackler since the tactical switch, and against Real Sociedad, he completed four tackles, the most on the pitch, and made four interceptions. In between, the two wide central defenders has seen a new road for Frankie de Jong. He was deployed as the side's libero and there's another defender who will progress with the ball but even more so when making forward runs. The two wide players Jordi Alba and Sergino Dest have been in fantastic form and though they are positioned as wingbacks they serve more as a supporting role for the midfielders occupying the flanks. Dest scored two excellent goals which demonstrates the high position he takes up and Jordi Alba ended the game with an assist. This new system has benefited both attacking fullbacks as they now have less defensive responsibilities with the free them to attack more. Sergio Bisquets and Pedri were the central midfielders. Bisquets dictated play and has taken a higher up position since the tactical change. His importance is telling with the numbers of passes he makes into the final third, 11, with only Messi completing more whilst Pedri has been leading the press in midfield. Pedri applied the most pressure to an opposing player receiving the ball in their last match, 29 times. Dembele was the size number 9, often on the last defender's shoulder stretching the defence line and on the blind side. Still, his energetic movements have been welcome and complement the two players operating slightly behind him, Griezmann and the captain Messi. Two players who love to drop deep and collect the ball, Messi more so. Both are great passers of the ball but are difficult for the defenders and midfielders to pick up because they operate between the lines. Messi has more creative responsibilities whilst Griezmann works extremely hard off the ball, applying pressure and enforcing the opposition to play sideways or backwards. But what exactly has changed tactically? Barcelona's press has changed and is now more aggressive and rewarding if the risk pays off. Messi and Dembele position themselves as the front two, which prevents the opposition's goalkeeper from distributing the ball to either central defender, and this forces the goalkeeper to look wide. Forcing the opponents out wide or forcing the distribution to the fullbacks immediately reduces the number of passing options that the wide man will have on the ball and creates uncertainty. The errors are forced because of the pressure applied by the Barcelona wingbacks who look to engage and close down the angles the player on the flank has on the ball. Another welcome benefit of this new pressing shape is that it forces the opponent's fullbacks deeper than preferred. Seville and Raul Sociedad have fullbacks who typically like to advance and are offensive minded, but this system didn't allow them to be. They had to take up average positions deeper than usual during the recent matches against Barcelona. Barcelona's new system also has seen their man marking their opponents when they are trying to build, limiting the time each player has on the ball and effectively isolating those players. The risk lies if the aggressive press is bypassed, because the man marking system, this encourages defenders to leave their defensive areas, which leads to gaps and possibly expose De Jong if he's to play in central defence in the long run, assuming the system is kept. 
The wing backs generally play an integral role in the system, both in and out of possession. This is also due to Barcelona using their flanks to progress up the field, freeing up space for the central players. When Barcelona builds from the back, the two wing backs stay wider, but on different lines, disrupting any press and offering themselves as outlets. So Barcelona can progress up the field and out of possession, they are vital in pinning the opponent's fullbacks. Given Barcelona's incredible average possession since the switch doesn't just indicate how well they can keep the ball, but also how well they are counter-pressing once the ball is lost. Though Barcelona lost heavily to PSG in the first leg, not using the system, they still went to Paris believing they can put in a performance, which they did. The game ended 1-1, but Barcelona played PSG off the park and their pressing proved too difficult for PSG, with them only having 27% of the ball. As each game passes with this new system, the players are becoming more familiar with it and certain player improvements are becoming more evident. But who are these improved players? Sergio Bisquets has been one of those key players this new system has suited as it's mitigated a weakness, less mileage. Now with three at the back, he looks to be back at his best and holds far less responsibility in dropping deeper to cover and be the third man in defence. Instead, he has more license to be effective further up the pitch, where he now has more options ahead of him and this highlights his strengths. With the extra players around him, his ability to find the third man via a wall pass or the one touch pass effectively eliminates multiple opposing players during their press. And since the tactical switch, we've seen the best version of him this season and the telepathy relationship between Sergio and Messi. Dembele is another player who seems to be thriving but is a player who's been given a new role and a big responsibility. Knowing of Griezmann's striking talents, Koeman has opted to use Dembele as the number 9 and his off the ball movement has been a handful for the opposing defenders. Often operating on the shoulder using his pace to stretch the opponents has given the space and time for Messi and Griezmann to receive the ball in between the lines and immediately put Barcelona on the front foot. Mengueza is another player who has excelled in this new system and has benefited his playing style. He's an aggressive defender, he likes to mark attackers very closely and engage either in a tackle or an interception. The wide defenders need to be stoppers but Mengueza is also excellent in bringing the ball out from the defence. By doing so, not only does it add another body in the field but also can force an opposing player to engage in a press so Barcelona are not outnumbered in the mid or attacking third. Though we've touched on the possible weakness for De Jong, his new role as the size libero has helped Barcelona's progressive play. In their 6-1 away victory to Real Sociedad, no player carried the ball over a longer distance than De Jong, 523 yards. His new role also offers the side flexibility as he can either swap positions with Sergio Busquets or overlapping in midfield to affect play in the attacking third. The atmosphere around the club appears to be given a boost with the recent performances and it's not just the fans or spectators that can see the improvements on the pitch. Dest also agrees. He told Barcelona TV after the 6-1 win how much he enjoys the new formation. This system is really good for me and it's going well for the team. I have more space and I'm more involved. I am really comfortable playing almost as a winger and it's really easy for me to play in this team. Those were the words from Dest himself, but we are now going to go into the tactical conclusion. Whether Koeman chooses to stick with the system is yet to be known, but one thing is for sure, it's brought a feel-good factor to those connected with the club. With Barcelona now chasing the La Liga title, which seemed a long reach just weeks ago, this system could be what they need to close that four points gap between them and the league leaders. It's also important to note that they have players missing and with De Jong playing as the size of libero, it would be interesting to see how Pique will fit in, if he can. This system offers Barcelona a lot of tactical fluidity and they can rotate without changing the system too much. Jordi Alba and Dest are currently the size wingbacks, but it's a job that Junior Firpo and Sergio Roberto can do. The young talented Eli Moriba often features as a sub frequently for Pedri, which indicates they can do a man-for-man -man swap in central midfield. Coutinho, Fati and Puig are even more talented players who can come in if the likes of Griezmann or Dembele need a rest. Barcelona have been a great possession side with this system, but Coleman doesn't shy away from being more direct and has the players capable of breaking lines. The central players are enjoying more freedom and this is partly down to the wide men freeing space for them to operate. 
Barcelona have pressed high and aggressively, immediately putting them on the front foot. And now with just the La Liga to focus on, will Coleman win the title in his first year in charge? That was my tactical analyst of Ronald Coleman and Barcelona's brand new formation. We're now going to go into the Football Manager game to check out my Football Manager recreation and we're going to see how that went. Spoiler, it went very well. So stay tuned. So here we are, we have Ronald Koeman's Barcelona 2020-21 tactic. Now it's a 3-4-3 which can change to a 3-5-2 if the Trequartista, which is Messi, advance further up and pushes alongside the pressing forward striker. But for the player roles in goal, we do have the sweeper keeper, which would be Ter Stegen, of course. The two wide central defenders are ball playing defenders with the stopper duty. They are instructed to pass it shorter, to stay wide, to tackle harder and to mark tighter. We do have a ball playing defender in central defence. There is a reason why I didn't play the libero. Within a libero, who is going to be sweeping, that encourages the opponent strikers to be more advanced. What started to happen is that the opposing striker started to find gaps between our three central defenders. By using the central defender on the defend duty, solved that problem. So he is instructed to pass it shorter and mark tighter. On the flanks we have two defensive wingers instead of wingbacks, the reason being the defensive wingers aim to press the opposing fullbacks and win the ball back high up the pitch which is exactly what Jordi Alba and Sergino Dest have been doing. So that's the reason why I went with the defensive wingers and they are instructed to take fewer risks, cross aim into the centre and shoot less often. In central midfield, we have the deep line playmaker on the support duty, which would be Sergio Bisquets. He's instructed to pass it shorter, dribble less, tackle harder and mark tighter. The box to box midfielder, he's instructed to dribble less, shoot less often, get further forward and mark tighter. The box to box midfielder is where Pedri would play and in defence, he likes to pressure the attacking midfielders and helps protect the defence line. In attacking midfield, we have an advanced playmaker under support duty. He's instructed to pass it shorter, dribble more to get himself closer to goal, roam from his position to find pockets, tackle harder and mark tighter. On the right to him is the Trequartista where Messi will play. He's instructed to pass it shorter, shoot more often and mark tighter. Now one thing he's not going to do is join the pressing forward in the first line of press because when the team are defending, the rest of the pack need to carry him. But as soon as we win the ball and go on the offence, the team will look for the Trequartista, which will be Messi, as the attacking outlet. And up front, lastly, we have the pressing forward on the support duty. He's instructed to pass it shorter, shoot less often, roam from position and move into the channels. The reason why he's not given an attacking duty is simply because the gap between the attacking midfielders and the striker became too big. It then allows the opposing team to play out of the defence and be our press. If the striker is pressing and the two attacking midfielders behind him are too far behind, then it's just going to be too easy for the opposing team to play out from the defence. So that is why I went with the pressing forward on the support duty. So for the team instructions for the mentality, we have the positive mentality. The attacking width is very narrow. So we are going to try and channel our play in central areas. But with the defensive wingers on each flank staying wide, they are going to be stretching play, which should then free up space for the central players. For the approach play, we are going to play out of the defence. Passing directness is on shorter with the tempo on extremely high. You can tone down the tempo to high, but after a while, what you will notice is that other teams start to drop deeper and deeper and deeper. With the extremely high tempo, we can then disrupt the opponent's defence shape. In the final third, we are going to be working the ball into the box, dribble less so we have a pass first mentality and be more expressive, especially the attacking players. When possession has been lost, we are not going to counter press. We already have extremely urgent pressing and we have players tight marking and tackling harder to engage in the tackle or interception. The reason why we don't have counter press, if we check here, the players who are going to be counter pressing is everyone but the central defenders. Now again, if everyone press apart from the central defenders, this would then leave a gap between our midfield line and our defence line, a gap that is certainly not welcomed. When possession has been won, we are going to hold our shape. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he's going to slow the place down. He's going to roll it out, preferably to Sergio Bisquets. 
out of possession, we are going to be using the offside trap with the much higher lines. That there, I feel, is very, very vital when it comes to stopping the opponents from playing out of the defense. Our defense shape is narrow, so we're going to force the opponents out wide. We are going to be using the tighter marking, the extremely pressing intensity, and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. That there wraps up the tactic. We also have a second version where we are using the wing backs, but then truthfully, this version was just not as effective as this version right here. But another thing with the extremely high tempo, you must watch out for it. If you are losing the ball far too often, especially against the top sides, I do then suggest to reduce the tempo just to keep possession a little bit better and also against the top sides that are less likely just to sit and drop deep. So the reasons why we are using the extremely high tempo may not apply against the big sides. But that wraps up the tactic, we are now going to look at some of the results. In the La Liga, we did win the league. We also won the Champions League, beating Juve in the final. In the Spanish Cup, we got knocked out in the fifth round by Real Sociedad. And in the Spanish Cup, we came up runners up. In the La Liga, Messi ended the season as the top goal scorer. He ended the season with the most man of the match awards, 19, which is incredible. He had the highest average rating, 8.07. The most assists as well, 22 assists. So that's probably the best I've seen from an individual performer. But statistically, we scored the most goals, we had the highest points per game. We didn't have the most shots, that was Real Madrid, but we came in second. We didn't have the most possession as well, but again, we came in second, just 1% behind Real Madrid. We did concede the fewest, we had the most clean sheets. And we also had the second best pass completion ratio. For the player statistics, we already saw that Messi scored the most goals, had the highest assists, he took the most shots, he also had the highest man of the match awards, but he also played the most key passes, so the Trequatista is a key player, and it is obviously recommended that he is basically your best player in the side. You can see the benefits here when the Trequatista is your key player. And when it comes to XG, we created the most XG in the La Liga, creating 80.11 expected goals throughout the whole season. When it comes to scoring goals, most of our goals came from play shots, 53 of those were play shots, 9 were powerful shots, 1 was a lob, 9 were headers, 7 were free kicks and 7 were penalties. When it comes to assists, 20 were free balls which is the most, 13 were crosses, whilst we have 6 from corners, 9 from free kicks, 7 from short passes, 4 from the opposition mistakes, 3 or 2 sorry from medium passes and 2 from squared balls. So looking at the squad stats, we can see that Messi was the size top performer, of course he was. He scored 36 goals in all competitions in 41 games, getting 27 assists. Griezmann scored 18 goals in 40 starts, getting 3 assists. Ansu Fati scored 11 goals in 22 starts, getting 8 assists. And Dembele scored 8 goals in 16 starts. The creative players on our side were of course Messi with 27 assists, we have Jordi Alba with 9 assists, Coutinho with 9 and Sufati with 9. A lot of our statistics is spread out throughout the whole squad which indicates a great team performance. But that there wraps up my video ladies and gentlemen. If you are new or you haven't yet and enjoying my content make sure you are subscribed to this channel, make sure you leave a comment and like this video. My name is RDF, it's been a pleasure, shout out to all my Patreons as well, I love you guys, I will see you soon. If you have any more tactical ideas make sure you leave them in the comments. See ya and stay safe.